Hello from Chinature.com, this is Mark Josie. Today will be a video showing you a uh, review and comparison of the new Umorex Cold Single Action Army Revolver and compared to the Dan Weston series. So this is a very uh, controversial topic but um, whatever I think will be presented in this video and seriously I have handled so many uh, CO2 guns in the past to the point that uh, it's getting tiring seeing the same kind of shit done all the time and it's like hey you have this uh, design and then they start to get people hype about it and then they start to make different shells for the same internal and call that a new gun that is complete bullshit so um, it's like Hey, we got a steel storm, um, Umarex steel storm, and then they make a steel force. Hey, it's the same internal, same gun, different look, different shell. So when you hold it, it's mostly like the same thing inside, but the different clothing. It, it's starting to get boring when you start to get a lot, a lot of guns in your hand, right? Dan Wesson is one of those like... Hey, it's really hype when you first get your first one or two. It's really cool because there's no uh, shell ejecting or shell loading uh, gun in the market so far. And hey, this is the only thing that, that is there, right? So everyone is hyped because this is the only thing. This one is also shell, shell um, or cartridge loading gun. And it's, 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 it's like a totally different class. I would have to say Umarex really did the right thing this time. Uh, first of all, let me compare, okay? The Damaston, I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six Damastons here, okay? We've got five on the ground. So, six Damastons. Two, uh, two point five inch, there's a four inch, six inch, and eight inch. Okay, this one, there's only one, okay? You, you have three var variants, and um, we have, you have a blue version, which is black, okay, not blue, but blue finish, black body white grip same grip now this is the nickel nickel plated finish with white grips okay okay it's fake ivory color and then there's a whatever limited edition with I don't know if that is real wood grip or not wood grip okay but it seems brown grip and then blue finish so anyway all that stuff is cosmetic okay the, the whole thing is the blue or nickel they are nicely done they're not cheap finish Okay, the Dan Wessons, they are cheap finish. First of all, let's take a look at the close up here. You can see it's, it's not really like shiny, bling bling shiny, but this is very high class kind of finish. It's, it's very high class um, nickel plated kind of vibe. Okay, if you put my Air Arms uh, S400 MPR here, the rifle, it will look really alike with the finish on the barrel. <laughs> It's really, really alike. Um, oh, by the way, you know what? For comparison, let me grab you a very high-end gun here. Um, this is not part of the plan today, but I have to take out, take out this thing to let you see. Okay, I have a very high-class gun here that has the real nickel-plated finish. Whoa, holy shit. Okay, so this is epic. <laughs> this is the Air Arm FTP 900. This is real nickel plated finish. You can see it's not shiny right here, the, the shroud. It's not shiny. It's not like fancy bling bling. It's just sort of um, a very matte finish but champagne color. Okay, this is what you call nickel plated. Okay, now compared to this, very close. You see, very close. This is a little bit brighter or a little bit more shiny but other than that it's very close okay so this one when I hold it it reminds me of my fancy uh, rifle you, even even this part here nickel plated finish it's, it's not like a shiny 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 kind of finish it's, it's very matte color satin or whatever you call that but um, it's, it's kind of champagne color okay so this this type of finish, you can also find that on the Smith & Wesson handcuff, which I forgot where I put it. It's somewhere here. Anyway, <laughs> so it's very, um, very, very realistic, okay? Very, very realistic. Now, talking about the finish on the Smith, uh, no, sorry, Dan Wesson, not Smith & Wesson, okay? This is the gold version. And I have to say that, wow, like, 
gold version. Man. Well, yeah. Okay, gold plated stuff. It can get very fancy and nice looking if it's done right. This is what I call is not done right. Okay, this one you can clearly see it's a painted gold. And you can find this kind of gold in places like Home Depot and stuff like that. Buy a can of gold paint and you can spray paint the gun yourself. It looks exactly like that. So this one is a gold painted finish. Well, it's kind of flawless, of course, because it's done in the factory with those nice uh, equipment. So, okay, fine. Now, with the, not cheaper one, but with the um, silver color, okay, one. This is more like a chrome-plated finish, what they call, okay. It is very silvery color, very, very reflective. You can even put your uh, face near it and you can see it's like a mirror. Okay, this is what they call a, a uh, chrome plated finish. Now this finish is okay, acceptable. Okay, it's acceptable. But it's not very like a real gun kind of finish. You know, if you really polish stainless steel and stuff to a mirror shine, it feels more cold and yeah, it feels cold and hard. This one, it feels soft when you look at it and it's more to the yellowish white tone reflection so it reminds me of some cheap spray or chrome plated uh, crap um, it's like one of these uh, weapons here one, one of those are kinda crappy uh, let me see if I can grab you one here okay this one is crappy this one is really crappy okay, let me show you this is what they call um, chrome plated steel and it's extremely crappy. What, what it is underneath is any kind of steel or, or, or even copper or whatever metal. And then they, they spray paint a fuckload of um, chrome plated stuff on top and make it turn into a, a shiny surface. It's exactly like this. See, it's cheap. It's cheaply done. Okay. Now this is this is crappy, like really crappy, crappy, crappy. Okay, what I call a nice. Okay, let me just put the thing down. Okay, what I call a nice um, finish is it's closer, like a silver finish. It's closer to the um, the six inch version. This one, the closer, but it's still crappy. Okay, the six inch version. Um, on the barrel, you see, they put a little bit of texture there to make it more non-reflective and it feels more cold in a way. In photos, if you don't set the white balance nicely, uh, it may trick out people. But if you really look at this in real person, this is, this is very obviously um, a sort of effect done by using a little kind of texture whatever on top to make the metal uh, less reflective. Also, the surface here is more like a cloudy uh, finish. It's not as reflective as this 2.5 inch. This one is very reflective. This one is less reflective. People call this the stainless steel look. But you know, like seriously, it doesn't look like stainless steel to me. Now let me just take something to compare right here. Stainless steel. Okay, let me grab this coastal saber here, okay? This is stainless steel scabbard. You see, it looks very cold, not only cloudy, but also cold and hard, okay? It looks really, really cold and hard. It doesn't need that texture to be not reflective. Like, when you touch it, it is very smooth like silk okay it's totally smooth but when you look at it it just doesn't look like very shiny 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 okay it it has that kind of um i don't know how you call it but it's, it's a kind of reflection that you look at it and then you cannot see your face or whatever inside it's not like a mirror okay you can see some lines the lights in lines this one they try to do it on here but when you touch it it's debunked right away because um, yeah you can feel the texture and it's a texture doing the trick 
right here on the body they cannot do it so what they did was they give it a less uh, polished finish underneath and then they they give it a spray paint coating and uh, so yeah it's not like it's not very high class kind of vibe so it looks very cool on camera or in photo of course but yeah and the worst part is the hammer. Not only that, it can have a tiny bit of wobble, but that, that can be fixed. But the thing is, when you look at the hammer, you can see a line right here, the seam. Okay, this is where it's the worst part of the gun. When you take photos of it, you can see a line right here already. In real gun, you know, you cannot find that line. It, it's ugly. So, yeah, that, that, that applies to every one of the damn lessons. Now, let's take a look back at the Colt uh, SAA you see you don't have a line right here there's no line everything is so perfect and the metal is the finish on the metal is really done right to the point that you hold it it feels right now okay the black oops this is not the um okay there we go the, the black the black finish they try to do it like a glossy black um, trying to imitate a blue, but it's still not a blue finish, right? It's the spray paint, black painted, uh, finish color gun. Okay, I wish the thing right now is in blue. Blue steel is a beauty to handle. When it's done right, shiny, it's very nice. Okay, what I mean by blue steel, let me take one here. This is blue finish. Wow, Air Arms HFT 500. Okay, a lot of Air Arm rifles are like this, right here, the tube and the barrel. This is this is blue. Okay, it's reflective. It's it's very shiny-ish, but the reflection sometimes because of the uh, oil and stuff on top, you may see some reflection of blue, purple, um, yellow, or whatever color. It's very fun to look at. Okay, and when you when you rub it all down with some silicone oil or something like that to clean it up, it will look um, very shiny, uh, black, blackish to a tone or reflection of yellowish or something like that. So it, it's very, very um, fun to look at. Okay, so this is real blue finish. The, the stuff on firearm is like that too when it's done right. So this one here is very cheap plated painted black okay it's not a problem but if you're talking about in comparison to the code SAA the code SAA is like okay it's a nickel plated finish it is looks like nickel plated finish no matter if it's real or not okay it does look like one to me because I handle a lot of nickel plated finish stuff and it looks exactly like that that one okay it want to look blue but it's not blue they look to want to look stainless steel it's not stainless steel and that's weird okay now this is 10 minutes and 8 inch with the gray finish okay this one i can accept because uh, well there's not much gray colored guns or whatever so far but yeah you see it's not black nor silver it's gray so it's a color of its own so i'm fine with that right um it's different. It's not an imitation of the other kind of style. Now, <coughs> um, this is the Smith & Wesson TRR-8. Um, so, it's another kind of revolver looking gun. I changed out the cylinder with the, with the Dan Weston 6 inch here. Okay, you see it's a silver one. It's supposed to be a, a black hammer and black cylinder and then a black trigger. But I changed out all the parts because it looks cool like that. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, it's supposed to be a uh, Dan Messon looking or Dan Messon internals with a different shell by Umarex. Okay, so Umarex took the whole Dan Messon thing, make a different shell for it. Like this for and it, like for, uh, this section is different. Okay, this section they changed the logo. Everything else is the same. Fuck it. Okay, the site is the same. Oh, sorry, the site is not the same. They put a new site on, but even the rail is the same shit. And so yeah, the the finish of it is not a very glossy black. So I think this black is acceptable. Okay, this black you can you can be like okay, it looks very real like that. 
Um, but you know, if you handle this gun that you think is a new new product, well, try handling another one like this. It feels very alike when you hold it. Okay, like okay, the first is really ident identical. You know, like if you put it like that, it's totally identical in terms of size, the trigger feeling, even the spring, the inside, the grip, everything feels the same. So why do you want to spend over 100 bucks to buy the same product again? Just to see the new wordings on the body, right? Now the coat SAA. The coating, the coating, the finish is done right. The grip, okay, they try to imitate ivory. And I would say that this um, thing does look pretty real in person. Um, you want to say it looks like uh, plastic, but surely it's not a plastic vibe to me. Okay, and, and especially when you open it up, you see the whole thing inside, you cannot spot one uh, little dot that is not painted or not in this color. So it looks really, you know what it reminds me of? The, um, um, a, a game in Chinese called Mahjong. Ma, ma Okay, so it it's like the mahjong tiles. Um, when you hold the thing, it feels very much like the mahjong tiles. So they are trying to imitate, whoops, imitate the uh, that kind of ivory vibe, and this really do look like it. So I think that they really did a good job, and you can see even inside is flawless. The whole thing is uh, nicely finished. So it's it's really really nice, and also they include the tool right here which is very nice they don't they don't need uh, that crappy screw or whatever you know with the Dan Weston you have a screw right okay and, and the problem with the Dan Weston series is you, you have to go like this and this thing will loosen up with time it, it will get loose so when you start to get very uh, like play with it a lot okay this thing will, will be loosened up so it's not really good design and then, okay, after that, this thing here, it's not easy to screw if your finger is kind of chubby, okay? You try to screw it like that, okay, this here, it jams your finger, and it's not comfortable to use. Now, this one is suitable for anyone. Even your finger is not strong, not big, not small. You can just take this, shove it in, and easily work around with the screw. And it's very comfortable to use. And then it snaps it back in place without needing any tension or whatever springy thing. Okay, so it just snapped back and locked back in place. There's no play, you cannot even move it. So the whole thing feels very, very solid. Now talking about a hammer, you hear the sound. Okay. The trigger, the trigger is very sexy. This is very, very slim trigger. And when you when you pull it, it really I'll use my pinky. I just lightly drag it and you can already hit the trick hit the hammer. Now this one. It hurts. When you when you try to pull it hard, it hurts. And then this thing. Do you, do you hear that springy sound when I when the hammer hits forward? It's not solid. Look at that. You see when the when the trigger returns, you can hear that. You see like that, and the, and the, when the hammer hits, it's not a solid like ba ba like that. It's like ba <laughs> like this. Now look at this one. See, when I release the trigger here, there's no sound. There's no sound. Okay? It's a clean hit. And this thing will not go... You don't feel that silly vibration. 
Not to mention that the trigger pull on this one is very tough on sing, uh, double action. And then on single action, yeah, it works. But I hate it when you hear the sound when the trigger return. Let's see. Again. You do not have that sound in real firearm. That is really weird. Okay, so um, yeah, and also the uh, how the cylinder is done is it's kind of different too. You see, you cannot see holes here, right here. Okay, you cannot see the holes, right? Okay, now I think you can see it. You cannot see the holes. It's not like it's not like how it is at the front. Okay, so I think if they make it like this at the back, that will be nicer. It looks real like that. Okay. Right now it's not real. Now this one, this is very realistic. I mean, okay, let me just take this out. You see, there's a hole there. A real, very realistic looking, you see? So every single cartridge or bullet is inserted into its own um, hole. And it, it feels so nice there. Um, the front is of course realistic looking. The back is also realistic looking. So I think that the Code SAA is like really a different class. If you want to compare this Stan Winston and this one, I think they're two totally different grades. Now, not only that, um, uh, the, the, the gun, but also the shells. Let me take one shell out. Okay. Now let's compare the shells. Okay. I know my Damison shells is kind of fucked up, but it's fine. Okay. I'm just talking about the main construction and not the look of it. Okay. First of all, the Damison shells, you got this head here that is, that is kind of rubbery and toyish looking. You don't know what it is. Okay. It doesn't look brass. It doesn't look plastic I don't know it, it looks kind of weird this one the whole thing looks like a piece of brass and it looks very very nice and realistic like that okay second thing is the damage you load from the front okay and what holds the BB in place is this little plastic thingy now this one you insert the BB from the back and it, it is held by a rubbery or plastic Z uh, tube kind of seal. This thing acts as a seal um, from where the air pushes out to this shell. So all the air is utilized to go into the tube. And then there's a short section right here about one inch that is the barrel inside the shell. And that little one inch gives the gun more velocity or a kick start power whatever you call it so for the for the projectile to accelerate and it makes the gun more powerful and also more accurate like that this one the BB is held right here so this little section acts as a detent to um, hold that projectile in place and when the air goes out from the the uh, valve whatever here into the shell because there's no seal inside here but the seal is on the gun okay so it it's not like a really nice perfect seal for sure and then the air goes in here it's wasted in this little like not wasted but it, it's like trying to pack it up in this little space here okay and then the air will push this out of the barrel okay well it works but the thing is in this here right here okay the air is doing nothing but traveling forward so it's not as efficient as this one where the projectile is here you go bang and it pushes the projectile from here to accelerate already so in terms of efficiency this one actually does the job better than this one and also don't forget that in my lab test or whatever you call that I can use pellets with this one and it works extremely well with pellets this one it will only work with BBs because of the size now to load pellets with this one you cannot just put a pellet inside you have to have some kind of tool to push the pellet um, to deeper 
into the shell so that it's not being uh, secured by this thing too much uh, because or else it will just hold it in place and not fire. So uh, when you push it in a little bit deeper, it will fire. And with um, seven green pellets, I chrono that with a fresh CO2 and I'm seeing 380s. So you see, 380s FPS to about 400 FPS with seven green watt cutters. And um, if you see, okay, this gun is set to fire 410 FPS with steel BBs. And steel BBs are 5.1 to 5.4 grains. I can fire the pellets. Okay, this is the pellet I use. RWS uh, R10 pellets. So this this pellet I can fire at about uh, 400 FPS, and and it's really amazing. With that power, you're getting 2.2 uh, FPE or so, and it's comparable to one of those high-end Umurex um, guns. Whoops, like this one, you know the Umurex Colt uh, 1911. That that kind of pistol. It's it's really close to that kind of power. Um, two point something FPE, something like that, and which means that the gun will have enough uh, power for shooting longer range and also being accurate at a longer range. Even though it doesn't have a rifle barrel, it still performed that way, which is very impressive, in my opinion. So anyway, um, overall, if you want to say, hey, should I get the Colt SAA or the Damascus? I will say this one for sure. No matter what, the quality. The build accuracy, power design, pellet BB compa uh, compatibility, everything is really outperform, outperforming the Dan Wesson. But one thing that I really do like about the Dan Wesson is the gun come with loader, okay, and you can basically preload some shells, okay. And it's really fun for action shooting because these these um, revolvers they work with a lot of holsters too. So you see, you can go like that and shove it in with your uh, speed loader like so, and you're good to go again. And when you're done, you can go like that, dump all your six shot out, put your another speed loader in, and keep shooting. Now this you cannot do with the cowboy gun. Okay, this one, you need to buy a very expensive and hard to find belt holster and then when you can put it, it takes some time, load one by one, one by one like that. It's a different style of speed shooting but it's not easy and it's not um, like something everyone can just pick up and, and do it, right? So it's not easy and the holster is harder to find. So in my opinion, this one, uh, well, for action shooting, maybe it's not so friendly. But that one, it, it, it is friendly and it's meant for fast shooting. Accuracy, the SAA all the way, no matter what, okay? So basically, um, if you're trying to say, hey, I'm converting a Damascus into a pellet shooter, or I'm buying the pellet version uh, of the Damascus, well, they may shoot about, like, for so seven green pellet, they may shoot about 400 FPS, but this thing, the SAA can shoot 400 FPS with pellets too. I tested it. So what? You don't need a rifle barrel. <laughs> cool. Okay, so basically that's the uh, video for today. Hope you like it, and stay tuned for our future videos. Remember to subscribe and like. Bye-bye!